Okay, guys, uh, we are here with uh, Argo Castellarin, the owner of Castellargo Winery. I'm your friend, Nicola Biscardo, your Italian wine ambassador, Conexport Italy, Nicola Biscardo selection. We're visiting today our number one estate in Friuli region, together with one of my dearest friends and especially one of my father's dearest friends. Argo Castellarin, together with my dad, in 1987 founded Conexport, the little group of small boutique independent family owned wineries that they got together to export their wine, their lifestyle and their culture towards a glass of wine. Quindi Argo, dove, dove siamo noi qua adesso? Dove ci troviamo? Noi qui ci troviamo praticamente nel cuore del Friuli. Eh... Ci troviamo a Tricesimo, uh -huh. nelle colline moreniche, e siamo nelle, eh, ai piedi delle Tre Alpi Giulie, praticamente. So, we are in Friuli region, we are in Trigesimo, which is a little town uh, in the heart of Friuli, and we are uh, about an hour north east of Venice, and we are facing, in front of us, those mountains are the Pre-Alps. We call the Pre-Alpi Giulie, the Giulian Pre-Alps. If we cross those mountains, we are in Slovenia. If we go west, we go in Austria. And if we go more east, we will be on the coast, on the Adriatic Sea, and will be Croatia. So, this direction, what it was Yugoslavia, now is independent, Croatia and Slovenia, and Austria. Quindi anche un sacco di influenze culturali da parte di queste... Senz'altro, perché fino al 1918 eh, il Friuli era, eh, faceva parte dell'impero austro-ungarico. Di conseguenza i miei genitori hanno studiato sotto, eh, sono andati a scuola con l'impero austro-ungarico. 1918? Certo. So, until the First World War, 1918, this area here was still part of the Austrian-Hungaric Empire. So Argo just told me, my mom and dad at school, they had to take Austrian, as part of Tedesco. Austriaco proprio. Studiavano l'italiano, ma comunque facevano studiare anche il tedesco. So they were, they were studying Italian, but also German at school by the law. So, why I'm telling you this? Because you know already now that the wine is about the soil, so the exposure, the location, the effect of the Alps, the effect of the Mediterranean Sea, the, uh, the, the composition of the soil is made with the vine that makes the grape, but it's also made with the people. And so the fact that we are located in this crossway with all those different uh, invasion and the border moving up and down, we have many influences of all those cultures blended together. That's why the wine tastes the way it tastes. Ma la storia dell'azienda, dell la storia della famiglia Castellarin. È una storia vecchia. Eh, noi abbiamo, per tradizione, sempre avuto agricoltura. Mio nonno eh, è stato diverse volte emigrante negli Stati Uniti e ha portato le barbatelle proprio degli Stati Uniti e durante questi pellegrinaggi per lavoro negli Stati Uniti mm -hmm. ha fatto anche il maniscalco a Buffalo Bill, William Cody. Oh, that's a funny story. Uh, I said, Argo, now let's start talking about your heritage, your family the Castellarin family in the winemaking. He says, well, we always been farmer. We always had land and we always make our living with what the land was giving us. Not just vineyard, but farming in general. My grandfather was an emigrant and he went several times in the United States. Parliamo dei primi del Novecento. Parliamo dei primi del Novecento. We are talking about the early 1900 when you were no plane, you were going by ship, taking a month, a month and a half to get to US. And uh, he was bringing the Italian varietal into the United States in his luggage. And he says that it always been 
Maniscalco era quello che, che seguiva che i cavalli. I ferry, che faceva i ferry so, ai piedi dei cavalli. He was a Maniscalco. Uh, I don't know the translation. Basically, the, the person that take care of the horses and put the iron on the foot of the horses. Well, his grandfather was uh, the uh, Maniscalco of Buffalo Bill. That's a very cool story. Tante vero. The uh, story proceed. Um, Argo said that he start working in the farm very very young uh, since he was a kid right after school come and work uh, not only in the vineyards but they have fruit trees they have you know peaches they have apples they have a bit of everything they have animals but the very big change came in 1978 when himself and the three brothers uh, decide to uh, be focused on the vine be focused on the wine so they abandoned all the other growing and they were focusing in vineyards and they established a beautiful winery called Banear. Banear come from the initial of the three brothers Battista, che è il più vecchio, the oldest, Neveo and E and Argo AR, Banear. Banear grew really big to the point that they got close to 4.5 5 million bottles production. So very big winery. Today, Argo detached from the brothers and he opened a smaller estate, more voted to quality and single vineyard to make higher standard wine. And the company is called Castellargo and this is what we're going to see today. Grazie infinite. Es un piacere. Piacere tutto mio.